check it out. Make sure it was on. Down at the cross where the Savior died. Praise God. Down where for cleansing for sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of God. Glory to His name. Well, my God. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of fire. Glory to His name. Oh, precious fountain that saves from Yes, sin. it does. I am so glad yes. I said to Praise Him. Him. Yeah. There Jesus saves and He keeps me clean. Glory to His name. Lord, that is 
blessing of the reading of his word. Let us pray, Father, in the next few minutes we pray that you would help us, everyone. There is a window to the soul. Suffering is a window to the soul. And when we see people going through hardship, we see them going through physical pain, we see them going through difficult circumstances, we often see what is really in the heart and the soul of the man or the woman. Suffering is a window to the soul. Nowhere was this more evident than in Calvary. There on the Lord's right hand was a thief, and on the left hand another thief. On the right hand there was a man who was railing upon Jesus. On the left there was a man who was seeking Jesus. The cynic who was impaled on one side of Jesus said, If you are the Christ, if you really are who you say you are, Jesus, Save yourself and save us. His message was one that had been heard before. Because just a few verses previous, we have the Jews crying out, If you're Christ, the chosen of God, save yourself. We have the Roman soldiers mocking him and saying, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. And now a thief on the side of him says, If you are Jesus, if you're the Messiah, save yourself and us. There was in this cynic's mind no commitment to Christ. All that he saw Jesus was to be was a, a ticket to his own freedom. He didn't see Christ as the divine Son of God. He said, if you're the Son of God. And I want to tell you that that word if appears several times in our scripture and it begins all the way in the Garden of Eden when Eve is tempted by the serpent. This question of the divinity of Jesus was raised and this man really didn't believe in Christ. What he did believe in was that he wanted to get saved. And he wanted his body off of that cross. See, he, he didn't want spiritual salvation. He wanted physical salvation. He wanted to get out of the penalty, but he didn't really want the Christ. There's a lot of people like that. I visit people that are sick from time to time and they'll say, Lord, if you'll get me out of this, I'll serve you forever. And the Lord gets them out of it. Do they serve him forever? Not hardly. All they do is use Jesus for their own means. Their first goal is to please themselves, not to please Christ. Their first objective is to do what they want to do, not what he wants them to do. Christ is a means not the end. And here's this man who's only a few hours away from eternity. He is this close to hell. And he's crying out in this moment, I don't want you if you are Christ, but I want to be saved off of this cross. So would you please save me off of the cross? And I think it's amazing. You know, they say that the crosses were not more than a few feet from one another. And here is a man who is a few inches from Jesus, the Savior of all the world. And yet he is a thousand miles away from the heart of Christ. Isn't it interesting that we can be close physically and so far away spiritually? By the way, the inverse of that is true too. You could be far, far away physically, but very close spiritually. Wonderful, wonderful truth. This man writhed on the cross longing to escape the consequences of his choices, but he was unwilling to make a different choice. He was unwilling to make Christ his king. On the other side, there's a secret. 
This is a man who saw the error of the fellow thief. He said, don't you fear God? We're all on this cross, these crosses together. You're suffering. Jesus is suffering. I am suffering. Why don't you fear God? Marvelous insight that this criminal had. He says, we deserve what we're getting. You know, I think that uh, that's one of the first steps to reconciliation with God. Is recognizing, I deserve hell. Most people never get to that knowledge. Most people think they deserve heaven. Most people think they're going to go to heaven. But the truth of the matter is that because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and the wage of sin is death, the truth is that we all deserve hell and destruction. But this man confessed. He said, I deserve to die. You deserve to die. And once you realize you're lost, you're well on your way to salvation. You ever wonder why it is that you even thought that you were lost? Somebody preached to you, maybe. Maybe you read it somewhere. Maybe you heard it in a song. But how interesting it is that after all of the times that you were confronted with that truth, there was one moment when it finally grabbed you. Why? I wonder why it hit you when it hit you. Maybe you were a teenager. Maybe you were just a child. Maybe you were older. Maybe I preached at the university outdoors and I saw thousands of students go by. Five of them, I can count, that gave their hearts to Christ as a result of what we were doing there on that street corner. And I thought about that many times. Why would it be that thousands would pass by, but five would be saved? Because they finally came to that understanding their eyes were open to their spiritual need. Focusing on Christ, this seeker expresses his faith. And he says, you know, Jesus hasn't done anything wrong. Pilate said that a little earlier in the whole trial. I find no fault in him. Do you find any fault in Jesus? No. No, not this Savior. He is the supreme he is the one who is worthy of our highest praise. This man's done nothing amiss. I would say to you that once this seeker realizes I deserve the 